Hello, and welcome to worship here at First Presbyterian Church on this fourth Sunday in Lent. While we have resumed worship in the sanctuary on Sundays at 1030, we are also continuing to provide services for online worship for those who are not comfortable or not able to be in the sanctuary in person. Either way, you would like to worship, we are just glad you're here. I just wanted to make a quick comment um, that it's been, as of this date, almost exactly one year since we went into COVID tide. And it's been quite the year for our congregation and for all of us. So I would just like to take this opportunity to thank so many people who have helped make worship continue here, uh, the work of this church continue and to uh, give thanks that uh, so many of us continue to be safe and healthy in our area and that we are actually able to resume worship in the sanctuary. But uh, it's been a year and boy, it's been a year. We will be enjoying the uh, small pipes music today thanks to Karen Mahone of our congregation who will be playing the anthem as a duet with our musician Kathleen Howard and we are grateful to Karen and Kathleen for sharing their musical talents with us. The next issue of our challenge newsletter is ready. Email copies will have been sent out for you to enjoy. And if you would like a print copy, please contact the church office, 613-345-5014. And it will either be mailed or delivered to you. You are encouraged to continue to join us online for the midweek Lenten services, which are being held each Wednesday at 12 noon. Uh, they are recorded, they're available on our website, on YouTube, and our Facebook pages. So please join us for a time away of prayer, scripture, reflection, and music each week. Also, you are encouraged to please continue to check both the church website and the church Facebook page weekly for the interactive Lenten Gardens which are an online uh, resource filled with stories and music and reflections and crafts and snack ideas, of course. Uh, these Lenten gardens are produced by the Presbyterian Church in Canada, the Synod of Central and Northeastern Ontario and Bermuda, and they're made available for congregations and families to enjoy across the country. On this fourth Sunday in Lent, let us come to God in repentance and thanksgiving for the gift of love in Christ. Let us join in our responsive call to worship, which is in our online order of service on our website and is also available on the screen in front of you. The journey to Jerusalem is long. This is a wilderness journey and we are not always comfortable, but we trust and we persevere. We are, we are pilgrims, pilgrims on a journey. journey. We, we are, are travelers, travelers on the road. road. God's people are familiar with wilderness. After Egypt, they wandered in hunger and thirst, confused and tired, waiting for the promised land. Our destination is different. We aim for Jerusalem, where it all ends, and where there will be new beginnings. We are we pilgrims, pilgrims on, on a journey. journey. We are we travelers, are travelers on, the on the road. Our opening hymn this morning is number 242, if you happen to have one of our hymn books. If not, no worries, the words are on the screen in front of you and in our online order of service. It's number 242, What Wondrous Love Is This? Wondrous love is this, the cause of 
I invite you now to join with me in our opening prayer, <clears throat> which we will read responsively, and the words are on the screen in front of you. Let us pray. God of the wilderness, wilderness. Give, us give us strength, strength when, when we wander. wander. When, when we stray and, and grieve, hunger, hunger and, and thirst, thirst, you have promised to make water spring up in the, in the desert. desert. Quench, Quench our, our thirst. Feed us with manna. manna. Strengthen, Strengthen us when we are tired or, or lack trust. trust. In, in the, the name, name of, of Jesus, Jesus we, we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. And now we turn next to our confession, which is also printed it's on the screen in front of you. It's in our online order of service. And let us read it responsively. Gracious God, we are tired of our own grumbling. Though we run around like errant children, we long to return to your warm embrace. Though, Though we, we act, act as, as if the odds, odds are stacked, stacked against us, us we yearn to rest in the knowledge that your steadfast love endures forever. Though we crouch in the shadows, we long to feel the warmth of your love shining on upon us each day. Lead us from death into life, that we might live as children of light and serve one another as heirs of your Son, in whose name we pray. Amen. God sent not his Son into the world to condemn it, but that through him we might have eternal life. The one who comes from above saves us from our destructive ways and leads us into the fullness of life eternal. Thanks be to God. Now I'd like to invite the children to join me at the Gospel Box for the children's message. I would be willing to bet most of you have had this story read to you at one time or another, right? It's called Love You Forever. And I've promised several people that I would not read the whole thing because it makes we mommies get really cry weepy and cry. But I just wanted to read you a couple of parts of it um, because I want to make a point about it when we hear our gospel lesson for today. A mother held her new baby and very slowly rocked him back and forth back and forth, back and forth. And while she held him, she sang, I'll love you forever, I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. So see, there's the mommy with the baby. The baby grew. He grew and he grew and he grew. He grew until he was two years old and he ran all around the house. He pulled all the books off the shelves, he pulled all the food out of the refrigerator and he took his mother's watch and flushed it down the toilet. Sometimes his mother would say, this kid is driving me crazy. You see that? This kid looks like he's making quite the mess, isn't he? Did you make those kind of messes for your mom and dad when you were little? I bet you did. But at nighttime, when the two-year-old was quiet, she opened the door to his room crawled across the floor, looked up over the side of his bed, and if he was really asleep, she picked him up and rocked him back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. While she rocked him, she sang, I'll love you forever, I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. And of course, the rest of the story you go through and you continue to go through, and the mother always is telling her, her baby, even when he gets to be a big boy and then he grows up to be a man, that she loves him forever. And, you know, our gospel lesson today that we'll hear talks about 
somebody loving us forever. And that person is God. We'll be re- hearing um, what the story about um, the Gospel of John, where uh, Jesus tells the disciples that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that who believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So that kind of love is kind of like this mom's love, because not only is that love strong, it doesn't give up on us, even when we drive God crazy sometimes. I mean, and we do. We drive God crazy a lot of times. But, you know, the important thing is, is that God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to us so we could see what God's love looked like. So today, if you're thinking about that love and you're thinking about your parents' love, remember that Jesus loves you just like this too. And Jesus and God love us forever. So let's pray. <clears throat> Dear God, Thank you for Jesus' love. Thank you for loving us so much that you sent Jesus to earth so we could see what your love looked like. We ask you now to help us share that love with other people around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now let us bow our heads as we pray for insight into the word that God has for us today. Let us pray. God of light and truth, send your Holy Spirit to move in us and among us this day. Speak to us through the scriptures, read and interpreted, so that they lead us to encounter your living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd now like to invite our scripture reader to come forward, Doris Hallett. She's going to read our responsive psalm for us and then our lesson from the gospel. Good morning. Our psalm this morning is Psalm number 107, verses 1 to 3, 17 to 22. We'll give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's God's steadfast love love endures endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Those Those redeemed redeemed from from trouble are gathered gathered in from the land, from the east and from the west, and from the north and from from the the south. Some were sick through their sinful ways, and because of their iniquities endured affliction, they loathed any kind of food and drew near to the gates of death. Then Then in their their trouble trouble, they cried cried to the Lord. Lord, who saved saved them them from their distress. distress. The Lord Lord sent out a word and healed them and delivered them from from destruction. destruction. Let them give thanks to the Lord's steadfast love for God's wonderful works to mankind and let let them them offer offer thanksgiving sacrifices and tell of God's deeds with songs of joy. The scripture reading this morning is John 3, verses 14 to 21. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must lift it up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, and whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, loved darkness instead of light, and because their deeds were evil, everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by truth comes into the light so that they may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God within us, and for the word of God around us, thanks Thanks be to God. God.
of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight. God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I've been re-reviewing or reviewing my messages so far through this Lenten season. And one theme I've been noticing that is that intentionally or unintentionally, I've been spending a lot of time exploring texts that speak about God's love for us. So perhaps it isn't too surprising that today's uh, passage from the gospel speaks about love too. That famous verse we refer to as John 3.16. For so many of us, Doris read it, um, but I'll repeat that verse again here. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. But God, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Now this verse is so comforting and reassuring, especially in this Lenten season and during this season of COVID tide. I think it's one of those verses that gives us warm fuzzies and encouragement in good times and bad. But I've wondered whether if we think about it a little more, we might find a bit more depth to it and to this whole passage if we look beyond what's on the surface. Jesus articulates in this statement what Martin Luther calls the gospel in a nutshell. That God is fundamentally a God of love. That love is the logic by which the kingdom of God runs and that God's love trumps everything else, even human power and might, in the end. God comes in love to redeem loss, turn such tragedy into victory, 
and demonstrate true power through sheer vulnerability and sacrifice. Now, this love, this power, runs counter to how the world and quite often our own lives operate. Because the world believes that security comes not through vulnerability and sacrifice, but through power and might and wealth. We are taught from an early age to avoid being truly vulnerable, and we're also taught to avoid people who are truly vulnerable at all costs. So, sacrifice? Yeah, sure, when we can afford to. Love our enemies? Maybe if it doesn't leave us defenseless. Vulnerability? Only if there's no other option. And this kind of self-sacrificing love that Jesus offers, well, it's frightening to a world like ours. Because most of us, I would venture to say, would find it impossible to embrace Jesus' example. Except when we ourselves have been brought low by illness or loss or a broken relationship or disappointed hopes or some other way by which the world has taught us that no matter how hard we try, no matter how much money we save, we cannot by ourselves secure our own destiny or save our own lives. Only God can do that. Only love can do that. It's terrifying to be so utterly dependent, isn't it? Even if that dependence is on God. And it's also frightening, not only because of that dependence, but because of the claim that that kind of love makes on us, that self-sacrificing love. One thing I never, ever thought about with respect to this text, or really the good news in general, is that, well, God didn't ask our permission first, before sending Jesus to die for us. I know, this may seem like an odd detail to point out. But, you know, think of the claim a person, any person has on us once they might have saved our life, let alone died doing it. In the face of such love and sacrifice, what, what's our response? I have a story that I'm sure many of you who are parents will understand, and it's probably related to our book that I read for the children this morning, and I think it illustrates this point well. One night, little Tommy's dad said, it's time for you to go to bed. Upset that his father was putting him to bed earlier than he wanted to go, Tommy became angry and said, Daddy, I hate you. Tommy's father, well, he was exercising patience and parental wisdom, replied, well, Tommy, I'm sorry you feel that way, but I still love you. Then Tommy's response to such gracious words surprised his dad, because Tommy said, don't say that. I'm sorry, Tommy, but it's true. I love you and I will always love you. Don't, Tommy protested. Don't say that again. At which point Tommy's father said, well, Tommy, I love you, whether you like it or not. Now, of course, many of us who've had children, you know, we, we know, we've heard, probably heard this story before. I know I certainly have. But we always wonder why the children protest that kind of love. Why was Tommy protesting like that? Well, it's because he realized he could not control that love and twist it to his advantage. Indeed, 
in the face of such deep, unconditional love, there is no bargaining, no control whatsoever. If Tommy's dad had said, if he ate all his vegetables, he could stay up, or he agreed that Tommy could stay up later that night if he went to bed earlier the next night, well, then Tommy would have had some measure of control over the situation and indeed over his dad. But in the face of that unconditional love, that love, whether he liked it or not, Tommy was powerless. And that kind of love is like the love that God has for us that we hear about in our gospel passage today. We can choose to accept it or not. We can run away from it, but we cannot influence God's love, manipulate it, or control it. In the face of this kind of love, we're powerless. And it's only when we've abandoned those delusions of actually being in control of our lives and control of God and control of God's love that we realize that the loss of that perceived freedom and power is actually life-giving and truly frees us to be the people that God calls us to be. See, Like Tommy's dad's love, God's love is tenacious. God's love continues to chase after us, seeking to hold on to us and redeem us all the days of our lives, whether we like it or not. We don't have a choice when it comes to God's love. God's love doesn't give up on us, abandon us, or get angry with us, even when we get angry with God. So perhaps while we can still draw some comfort and reassurance and warm fuzzies from this verse, perhaps if we took it more seriously, it would also frighten us, conditioned as we are to be in control of our lives, Of course, COVID-19, which as I mentioned, it's been basically with us for over over at least a year now. It has taught you and I and our world how little control we actually have over our own existence, over our relationships and over our future. But we keep trying, don't we? In the face of that fear, that fear that makes us keep trying, let us remember that God's tenacious love and realize that precisely because we have no power over this relationship, it's also the one thing we can't screw up. Because God created this relationship with us, this love for us. God maintains it and God will bring it to fruition, and it's all because of the power of God's vulnerable, sacrificial, and persistent love for you and me. Let us recall this love as we continue the journey toward Jerusalem through the Lenten season, and we remember a wondrous love as this, O oh, our souls, O oh, our souls, a love that will not let us go, even if we want it to. Amen. Let us pray. We have heard the word of God, the word of love. We have heard the word of God, the word of grace. We have heard the word of God the word of service and ministry. Thanks be to God for the gift of God's word. Amen. Our next hymn is number 389. If you have a navy blue hymn book, you can follow along in that, or you can also follow along with the words that are on the screen. Breathe on me, breath of God.
And now let us come to the God who loves us and never lets us go. Come to God with our prayers and our hopes, our dreams, our fears, our joys, our sorrows, and lay them at the feet of him who loves us always. Let us pray. Generous and gracious God, with your great mercy, you have made us alive together with Christ. By your grace, we are saved from sin and despair and promised hope for everlasting life with you. You have shown us immeasurable riches through your grace and mercy, and we offer you our deepest gratitude now and always. We pray that each person who is praying with us today will know the fullness of your gifts in ways that touch their deepest needs. We pray for those dear to us and all those we've come to lean on in the months of the pandemic. We pray for those who are struggling in isolation or frustration, for all those who experience illness or pain in body, mind and spirit, for all who have lost someone or something central to their lives and have to cope with grief and sorrow. May all these, your children, know your grace and mercy. We pray for peace and safety in the world, for countries struggling to care for their citizens and to rebuild their economies, for all who do not receive the respect and consideration they deserve, for all those persecuted for their faith or their views, for all who are disenfranchised and long to live in freedom. May all these, your children, know your grace and mercy. We pray for your church around the world and for the congregations we know, for the work of presbyteries in, across Canada and the faithful ministries they lead in this time of working at a distance, for the learning we have gained in outreach during the pandemic, and to all who have connected with this congregation and to your church universal in new ways, and for ministers and other leaders who are finding this time of planning and decision-making very stressful. May your church and all its many expressions know your grace and mercy. We pray for the concerns on our hearts this day, for the fears and frustrations we struggle with, for any troubled relationships, for the doubts and the hopes which compete within us, and for any need of healing and support. May we your children know your grace and mercy. We offer these prayers to you and lift up our hearts to Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Lord, Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed Lord, be thy Lord, name. Thy Lord, kingdom Lord, come, Lord, thy Lord, will be Lord, done Lord, on Lord, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our debts. debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The season of Lent leads us on closer and closer to the cross. As we contemplate Jesus lifted up on the cross for our sakes, consider what the gift of his mercy and grace means for you. Let our offerings express thanksgiving for such an amazing gift from God. The mission and ministries of this congregation are ongoing. There are multiple ways you may donate uh, to support our work online through Canada Helps, by e-transfer, or by pre-authorized remittance. You may also depend on snail mail to get your donation to us or deliver your offering envelopes to the main slot in our door on Church Street if you live in the area. The envelopes are collected regularly. And we thank you for your generosity and support through this last year of pandemic. And now let us bless our offering as we sing the doxology.
Lord Jesus, you gave so much without counting the cost. We ask you and we pray that you will bless these gifts with your generous love. Send them and us into the world to bless it with the same hope and healing we have found in you. And let us not count the cost until we too have given all we can for your sake. Amen. Our closing hymn, again, is in our hymn book, uh, number 776, Jesus, Life of All the World. And the words are also in the online order of service and on the screen in front of you. great love and rich mercy have made us alive in Christ. So let us depart to live lives of grace and to do good works. God sends us forth with the immeasurable gift of faith. We will live in the delight of our salvation. God sends us forth to walk in the light of holy love. We will walk in the light of Christ. God sends us forth in spirit and truth. We will journey in the Spirit's tender mercies. And now, go with joy, and may the blessings of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with you today and always. Amen. Mm -hmm.